Hey, remember this part? Well, let's break that out into a full video. So I've mentioned it on a couple of podcasts that I'm on and things like that, and I've been asked, am I a fan of uh, Big Clive on YouTube? I don't know. You tell me. I think so. Anyway. Let's make that connection. So I fix up a lot of old computers, and that means I often get dead uh, dead power supplies. And there's a lot of interesting parts even in dead power supplies. The least interesting of which is uh, the connectors. But I usually save a few anyway. And this is the situation in which the connectors will work. I have this SATA connector. Unfortunately, it's not nearly long enough for what I want, so I'm gonna borrow some ketchup and mustard cables off of this length, patch it onto here, solder it up, shrink tube it down, and then attach it to the, the uh, back plane. So let's do that. Yeah, I don't need that much. I have a lot of these. And well, while I'm working on this, the last soldering project I had, I promised that I'd answer some questions, but that, that soldering project went kind of sideways on me, so I never got around to it. So why don't I answer those questions now? And I've got five. The first one's from Greg S., who writes, uh, rosin core or lead core solder? Uh, well, what is this? Oh, wait. This is not the solder that uh, was originally on this spool. That's at home. I split it in half and brought some here. I almost always go with rosin core. I have flux here in case I need it, but man, rosin core is just super easy to work with. And it's... I'm almost certain... Oh. Storm might be approaching. Interesting. I'll have to check that out later. I'm almost certain at this point that it's just a matter of, of how I was raised. Um, it's raised. It was born with a soldering iron in my hand or anything like that. Um, no matter how I was taught. Just for electronics work, I always go with uh, rosin core. Um, but I always go for real thin stuff. This is, uh, I think this might actually be point. No, that's way smaller. I don't even know at this point. I'd have to go look at the solder at home. In fact, I will probably fill you in with what kind of solder I've got down here. And frankly, uh, it's, I googled around, hey, you know, on like the blogs, hey, what kind of solder do people get these days now that, all the electronic stores in my region are closed. And I just ordered that, and it seemed to work just fine. And it's always distressing when I first turn the solder iron on because it takes entirely too long. But that's the way it is. I'm actually, that's about the only bad thing I have to say about this soldering iron so far. It's been, uh, you know, I've got my nice soldering iron at home, and I figured whatever soldering iron I have here, it'd be for whatever quick projects I need, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, nothing significant. But as it turns out, I really like this iron. It's one of those T12 ones that you see online all the time. I got it from, I think, Banggood? I don't know. So often I'm stuck with in soldering what's available, like what does the shop have? But if I have my druthers, I'd have thin rosin core solder and a way smaller tip than this guy. Uh, I, I keep forgetting to order other tips for the soldering iron, but I'm not a big fan of this type. I like, I like to work with a point. So, 
Next question, Megan asks, what is the best bread and grilled cheese for a grilled cheese sandwich? Well, that's a, not a question I was expecting to get, to be honest with you. But, um, uh, I would say, in, in my case, like, I don't know, in food, there's sort of a, a low and a high. I, I have been accused of being a bit of a gourmand or an epicurean in the past. I think that's a, a little... I think it's a little overstated. I do have I, I, I do have a cultivated taste in beverages. I will admit that. Um, part of that is because of allergies, but part of it is also brewing is and was a hobby of mine. Uh, I haven't had much time to do it lately, as you can imagine. But uh, I was also I also used to cook a lot more than I do these days, um, and I like fancy stuff. I, you know, I like, I like my, you know, cacavan. I like my, uh, you know, I'm supposed to come up with fancy things that I eat. And at a minute, I'm, I'm completely drawing a blank. Hey, Becky, what's a fancy thing that I eat? I mean, steaks, but that's, that hardly sets me apart, doesn't it? She's working in somewhere else in the building. Um... You know, I like cooking stuff. I like cooking shows. Um, but when it comes to things like mac and cheese and grilled cheese, like basically foods commonly associated with American youths, um, I find that I like the crap ingredients better. It's sort of like Chicago hot dogs. It's not really... And Chicago hot dogs are something I am definitely partial to. Being from there, it is kind of what I grew up with. But also, I mean, you know, they're better. Um, but I need, for, for a proper grilled cheese, I need the cheapest white bread you can get. American cheese, Kraft is almost too high a, uh, too high a brand, but it does melt a little better and that makes it better. Uh, and more butter than a human being can reasonably comprehend. And that's, that's, my, that's my favorite grilled cheese because it was programmed into my brain when I was but a tiny, tiny thing. So that's how that's gonna work. You know, that's, that's how that works out for me, I suppose I should say. Um, But, yeah, like in Chicago hot dogs, um, you know, the beef hot dog is important. The sport peppers are important. The celery salt is important. The lack of ketchup is important. But one of the important things that, that we, we, we don't talk about very much is uh, the neon green relish. The... the the stuff that is literally dyed that it's it's a literal dye to make it that color um and it's super crap but it's what you need if you want the right kind of want the right kind of chicago dog boy that's super tacky isn't it there we go i also like spaghettios that's from when I was five. I eat them occasionally when I am in a hurry. What I'm saying is that I'm five years old. So how do I, so I got the shrink tube on. I, I, I've got all the soldering to dig together, and I've got the shrink tube on. And now the question becomes: Well, what do you shrink the shrink tube with? Do you use a your rework station? Do you use your do you use a match? A uh, cheap heat gun. Cheap heat gun. Super cheap heat gun works great. Use it more often than you'd think. 
And I don't have a rework station. Not only do I not have a rework station, this is my secondary bench. My actual bench with like all my gear on it is at home. The only thing I have here is the soldering iron. Uh, I don't have any, I don't have a bench meter. I don't have a scope here, except I have a tiny portable LCD scope, which you may have seen in an earlier video. That clamp uh, multimeter I've got is the only multimeter I've got here. Eventually, like I've got a spot, like right over there is a hole where I want all my rack gear to, where I want all my desk, uh, my bench gear to go. But, uh, I haven't got it yet. And frankly, bench number two is, um, comparatively not that important compared to getting the radio station on the air, or in this case, getting somebody else's radio station on the air. So I haven't worried all that much about it. But this heat gun works fine. Guess where I got it? <clears throat> it is a maritime themed name. But I don't think you can buy anything involving boats or anything involving trains there. So it's got a weird name, doesn't it? Anyway. Yeah, that's all fine. That's all fine and good. It's going to scare the crap out of the next admin who goes in here because they're using clear shrink tube because that's the only thing I have in the proper gauge. <clears throat> all right, let's make these. Let's pick out the insulation first. Am I using this right? Probably not. But <sighs> who's got two thumbs that are presently in use and doesn't really care that much? But I'm going to cut that, strip that real stubby. Uh, a little more than that, I think. Next question comes to me from Kayla, who says, if you were going to homebrew a tabletop RPG... What would it be? Setting, theme, etc. Huh. Well, like any good programmer, this is something I've actually done. Uh, it was a system I developed when I was but a youngin, and then revisited when I was in my late 20s, and ran a few times, and had a lot of fun with it. Um, and it took place in the near future, uh, in, and the main setting was a arcology in the Midwest, because right about what you know, I guess, right? It was sort of a historical kit bash. It was sort of, I guess it would be included in the cyberpunk genre, but I was really aiming for something a little bit more corporate and more political. Um, but it was the first successful... It was the first successful late 21st century company town that uh, was built as a model space station as an underground arcology that then was uh, used to, where the technologies learned there was used to create a permanent space station at the Lagrange Five Point. And it was entirely corporately owned and it uh, wasn't great. <laughs> all the brochures look nice and then you get there and it's a little bit crap but it was more of a, of a political game and corporate intrigue game than it was your standard cyberpunk deal but I'm much more of a sci-fi guy than I am I am not at all a fantasy guy as you might imagine um, the system I was quite proud of, instead of going for accuracy or, or, um, instead of going for accuracy or, or like combat focus, and I know, <coughs> I know people love it. Hang on a moment. I wanted, I called it verisimilitude, which was, as far as I was concerned, <coughs> 
realistic enough. And, uh, but something that could be where you could roll and do the math in your head quickly enough that it wouldn't break the flow of telling the story was the goal I was going for. Did I get there? Not really. I didn't think so. But it was a 2d8 based system. Uh, and if you're playing at home, yeah, everything was powers of two because it made it easy for me. But I tried to make it adaptable where if you needed to, you could resolve where you could resolve combat in one roll of one die or you could knock it out into turns of indeterminate length. I tried to make it a little bit more flexible. Um, it was definitely a lightweight system, not of the kind that are popular these days. Um, so, but sci-fi is definitely my thing. But I don't do a whole lot of gaming these days because I have a cool hobby. I play with radio stations. Just something I've always wanted to do. I'm going to go look at that connector very quickly. Okay, I've marked it with a secret code, which I will explain in a moment. Uh, sorry if you can hear the fans. It's really cold out tonight. It's in the low 30s in freedom degrees. So, I don't know what that is in real degrees. Uh, I'll put it somewhere. All right. Uh, the black line is ground. This side is 5 volt. The dotted uh, pins are 5 volts. The undotted pins are 12 volts. I'm going to double check because I've been making so many dumb mistakes lately that I don't want to make another one. Yes, these are red, these are yellow, these are black. So, okay. Ray asks, general musings in the state of AAA game development and the release it now, fix it later mentality. Short form, I hate it. Um, I used to game a lot more than I do now. Uh, I think that's obvious that I'm not gaming that much these days. I do play a lot of RimWorld. Uh, I'm addicted to Minecraft. Uh, that's not so much a game as it is a form of relaxation for me at this point. So I don't, you know, that's a little different. But a friend of mine said that among a certain age of gamer... And they were speaking of somebody much younger than me. Oh, this has got the terrible solder on it. <laughs> um, there we go. I, uh... There's video games, then there's Minecraft, and Minecraft is just one of the ways in which I relax these days. Um, there's I play a lot of RimWorld. Um, in fact, I've got sort of a generational RimWorld game going right now that I've been playing for about six months, where uh, I pick it up every few weeks, and... Uh, so this is looking bad because it's got that no lead solder on it. And uh, so soldering to it is difficult. Hello? So I don't play a lot of AAA games. Um, and I haven't for a long time. I play mostly indie games. And one of the rules that I've set aside for myself is uh, I don't play a game if it doesn't have Linux support. Um, I've recently agreed to extend that to, um, to good Proton support in Steam. And if you're a Linux guy and really hate booting into Windows for gaming, which is a thing I used to do, and then just got tired of and stopped doing years ago, you know, a few years ago. Um, Steam has been great for that, you know, 
for video games, for especially for indie guys. Um, I know the the like the online stores for console gaming, and I used to be a huge console. In fact, in a lot of ways, I still am. I have a huge console collection. I used to collect consoles. Uh, now I started doing it again because I lost my collection for reasons. And uh, this is being a problem. I'm going to take this off and redo this. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I finally bought uh, Fallout New Vegas because it was on sale. Uh, I haven't played it. I played Fallout 1 and 2 and quite like it. In fact, I do have some Fallout merchandise, but I haven't been inter that interested in 3 or 4, but New Vegas has always been interesting to me because it's it felt a little bit more like a continuation of the original Fallout storyline, which of course it was. So that was interesting to get. Um Uh, I like watching people play, but I, I guess I'm bringing, mentioning Fallout because the, the, I guess the, one of the poster childs for the release it now, fix it later things is, uh, on one sense, uh, cyberpunk, which I was really interested in, but I didn't think I was going to play because Linux support seemed like a not, definitely not going to happen thing. Um... But then Fallout uh, 76 seemed to be a huge poster child, screw-ups all over the place, which I think ultimately cul culminated in Bethesda getting bought. Um, and uh, so that's fun, right? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of done with gaming, almost full stop, um, with, with AAA gaming. Um, a lot of the games that my friends seem to find seem to think are very popular are the, or like very much, are like the movie games, which I'm not a big fan of. But I'll be honest with you, once I decided that I was only going to play uh, games that ran on Linux, um, you know, my, my gaming world got a lot more narrow. Like, I have Kerbal Space Program. I love Kerbal Space Program. Uh, will I be getting the sequel? I don't know they're not promising Linux support. And to make a Linux native version and then pull it for the sequels because you got bought by, by a, a development house, uh, you don't get my money. No. Even if you do Proton, I don't think I'll be buying it. Bit of a shame, but there you are. The last question is from Timotheus. Is that how you pronounce it? I would say Timotheus. Timotheus, okay. Uh, give a short story about your discovery and work with Linux. Maybe that's long, but I'm curious as hell. Oh, man. Um, Linux wasn't my first Unix. Uh, I didn't start using Linux until, uh, two, well, no, I had a 1213 box running, but I wasn't I wasn't very I, I wasn't very savvy with it. Um, the first Unix I ever got root on, um, even in a small way, was uh, believe it or not, Next Step, which you would now know as uh, macOS. But back in those days, uh, it was a lot less, uh, a lot more Unixy and a lot less fashion company. I don't know how you describe Apple in 2021. Um, but uh, <clears throat> Rocket Club, I was a member of Rocket Club. It seemed like everybody at Rocket Club was, uh, uh, was an MIT graduate and had Unix experience. And they would talk about uh, when, you know, when you go to MIT, like I was gonna go. Um, it's a long story, but when I was in junior high, uh, I found a Unix Sys5 
textbook at a second-hand bookstore, and I read it cover to cover. And then when I was a freshman in high school, uh, my high school had, for the seniors, a AT&T Starland 3B2 based uh, word processing network for, for their creative writing classes. And I passed by the classroom one day and I saw all the weird computers and I stuck my head in and I said, is that a 3B2? And uh, the guy said, yeah, what do you know about them? I'm actually not much. Uh, I know they run Unix. And he was like, really? Do you want to be a uh, do you want to be a, uh, help me, you know, what do you call it? What do you call a student helper? Oh, you call it TAs now? Yeah. Okay, I can call it TAs when I was a kid. Anyway, I was in there twice a week um, for the, my first semester of high school, uh, fixing network issues for seniors in their creative writing classes. And it kind of took off from there. Um, I have more I could talk about how, how I became a Unix person, but I, I was, it was practically, it, it was, it, if I believed in destiny, um, destiny would be a part of it. But that may be a conversation for another day, uh, on Patreon, perhaps with, uh, uh, patron, uh, a friend of mine who remembers me from back then. That might be something we could do. Anyway, this soldering job is done. I think for strain relief, well, I don't know about you, but I think that's fine. <laughs> I, you know, would I do this in a work environment? Absolutely not. But I love doing this. I really do. I love these kind of cheap mods. Like, how long did that take me to do? Not very long at all. And now I've radically simplified how this machine is put together. So I'm gonna take this back plane, I'm gonna plug it into this SSD because if this SSD burns, I don't really care because it's old. And if it holds together, I'm gonna put the real SSD in and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, let's uh, go back to the computer. All right, well, we're coming to the end of the project. Um, and it turns out I do need to power that USB 3 uh, thing externally. And either the sound card I have is crap, which is entirely possible, or uh, um, the uh, USB bus is bad. So to narrow it down a bit, soldering iron's ready. Um, I'm gonna power up that USB 3 card, which means I need to solder a regular Molex connector on, not just a uh, SATA connector. So fun for me. More horrible, horrible modifications. liquid is flux, yes? Mm-hmm. And why do you put it on there? Mix the solder flow better. And in this case, mix with the horrible no-lead solder a little nicer. Looks terrible. Probably works fine. Usual movie surface. The idea is that it's behind enclosed cases, right? Mm -hmm. Not that any viewers can see it, but have I mentioned that I really like your ingenuity of your camera mount? <laughs> All right, that's it. Let's slap it back in and see what happens. Are there any LEDs on that card? Maybe not. 
I'm not seeing any. I mean, none of them are lit, obviously. But that might be a bad card, considering where I got it. Here, you want to hold this button down? I don't want to... Sam, you know how I can tell that you're not an official IT professional? Okay. All of the text that's uh, on that screen is not projected onto your body in a dim blue light while everything around you is dark. Oh, okay. Submit it. You should submit it to uh, bad stock photos of my job. The lack of projection on my face? Nah. If you go to bad stock photos of my job threads on like Reddit or things like that, most of the IT professional things. Ooh. Well, that's going to be a content match. <laughs> uh, I think it was the bus on the server's USB. The server's USB bus is a little bit dodgy. That doesn't surprise me. I've encountered that before, which is part of the reason why having USB interface cards is a good thing to have. So I'm just going to, I guess I'm just going to plug a, let's see, enable Jackie. How's the button? Depressed. What, not even a shrug or a smirk or an eye I'd, roll i'd uh i'd complain but you're going to be holding that button down for the next two and a half hours so i figured that was going to be uh uh are we on the satellite of love am i frank push the button frank yeah anyway i'm gonna go get a burger catch you later sam just uh just toss me some masking tape no 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 won't work <laughs> with masking tape you have to hold the button down Bye. Is this a bad episode of Lost? I was going to shut the door, but then I realized I blocked myself out. This is like when you first discover where the light switch is for the refrigerator, like around age six or so. And then you press it and make the light go off. And it's Are like, you at, can Whoa. you actually see me? Because you're kind of pointed. No, oh, I can see you. You're totally in the shot. Oh, that lens is... Bizarre? Yeah, yeah, bizarre. Anyway, uh... So what it was doing before, I should explain, is that it was doing this, um... Wait, I can pick up, can't I? Yeah, you can. <sighs> Less than a minute. I'm surprised. No, 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 no. Oh, no. okay, Stay okay. where you are. I wanted to, you to not move around as much. <laughs> kind of weirding me out. Um... So, uh... There's a, when there's like a buffer problem or, or some sort of weird communications problem with a USB sound card, the kernel will spam a bunch of retire capture herb warnings with like 10,000 messages dropped because I don't want to fill up your, your uh, kernel logs, except they don't tell you what the messages were, so you have no idea what's wrong. But in this case, it was pretty clear that it was some sort of communications issue, possibly a buffer under run between um, the sound card and the USB bus. So I did some doofing around. Uh, if I unplugged it and plugged it back in, it worked for a little bit, but then it would stop. And I figured, okay, maybe the USB bus on this is crap because it's a server and US they don't spend a lot of time thinking about USB buses. Um, but I did put this PCIe uh, USB 3 add-on card in. I tried plugging into that. No joy, um, because it actually needs power. So that's why I had to pry the backplane out and solder the Molex connector under the back. Um, and now it works without complaint. I need to remember that because I ran into this problem on the server at KTQA and I had to solve it by fine-tuning the settings. Where this hasn't complained about uh, a retire or capture URB or ERB or whatever mm -hmm. um, the entire time during the test. I mean, I'm going to test it a little bit farther now, but that's what that was all about. So, uh... Yeah, we're good to go. Mission continues. 
Well, the time I'm recording this outro, the station's been up for a couple weeks on the new IT infrastructure, and it's working great. Just a couple of adjustments here and there, and the addition of some new content, and KQWZ is on the air. So now that this project is over, I can get back to working on the studio, and in fact, a lot has been going on here, and you'll be seeing that here in the next week or so. Meanwhile, I'd like to thank my patrons, who are listed before you. Without them, I would not be able to do this. If you would like to be a part of my Patreon, you can click on the link in the description, then we'll take you to my Patreon. You get to see these videos a little bit early, and some special content where, most recently, we try a somewhat legendary and horrible beverage. <laughs>